You will be impressed with this story. The best part is, at the end of the video, prepare yourself for a journey into forbidden knowledge and spine-chilling revelations with the 2,000-year-old Bible, the Book of Enoch. This highly contentious text has sparked debate for centuries, documenting seductive fallen angels, violent giants, peculiar cosmology, and world-altering revelations. Despite chronicling events from before the birth of Jesus, the book is not included in today's Bible, and some scholars do not regard it as divinely inspired. However, this book filled with alarming knowledge was discovered in Abyssinia, Ethiopia in 1773 and has been incorporated into the scriptures of the Ethiopian Christian sect. This text is said to contain terrifying insights about the human race, including predictions of doom that will send shivers down your spine. What other secrets do these pages hold? Join us as we delve into the 2,000-year-old Bible revealing lost chapters with terrifying knowledge about the human race. The Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch, also called the Ethiopic Book of Enoch, is a pseudepigraphical work. It is an Old Testament book containing events written long before Jesus was born. The original manuscript of this ancient book disappeared at the end of the fourth century. Later on, in 1773, it was rediscovered in Ethiopia. However, the Christian sect in Abyssinia, Ethiopia, has included this book in their scriptures as a reference for their practice. The fascination of heretical Christian groups such as the Manichaeans, with a blend of Iranian, Greek, Chaldean, and Egyptian elements also contributed to the preservation of this book. Several clerical scholars have dismissed this book, claiming it contains revelations not divinely inspired. The ancient book of Enoch was excluded from the Bible for unveiling profound truths about the world's creation. This book records a list of seductive fallen angels, violent giants, peculiar cosmological facts, and other mystical revelations yet to be confirmed by Bible scholars. It is believed that the story of Enoch reflects many features of Babylonian mythology. This book by Enoch has also been confirmed to be a compilation of works that are mostly apocalyptic. Who is Enoch? Enoch is a biblical figure and the patriarch who preceded the pre-diluvian or pre-flood period of Noah's Ark and the Great Flood. He was the great-great-great-grandson of Adam, the father of Jared, and the grandfather of Methuselah, the person who lived the longest in the Bible. The text in Genesis chapter 5 verses 21-24 reads that Enoch walked with God and was no more, for God took him. This text was later interpreted by Bible scholars who believed Enoch entered heaven alive. According to the record, he was about 365 years old when God took him, as written in Genesis 5, 24 Only he and Elijah were taken by God without experiencing death in the Bible. He lived in faith and righteousness throughout his life and obeyed God's word to the letter. God was so impressed by his faith and righteousness that he spared him the pain of death. Enoch is a subject and pillar of many Jewish and Christian traditions. He was the author of the Book of Enoch and was also considered the Scribe of Judgment. Enoch was referenced in the Old Testament in the Book of Genesis and the New Testament in the Gospel of Luke 3.37, Apostle Paul's Epistle to the Hebrews 11.5 and Jude 1.14. Amongst the Catholic Church, the Eastern Orthodox and the Oriental Orthodox, he was revered as a saint, a personality all Christians should look up to. Some Muslims compare Enoch with Prophet Idris in the Quran. The ministerial journey of Enoch was a forerunner to Noah's mission as a preacher of righteousness and builder of the ark. The Dead Sea Scrolls. This book, written by Enoch, was rediscovered in the Judean cave in 1946-1947 by some Bedouin boys tending their sheep near the cave. One of the young boys threw a rock into a cliff opening and was surprised to hear a breaking sound. 
Out of curiosity, he and his friends entered the cave and found several large clay jars, seven of which contained leather and papyrus scrolls. The Judean cave is near the ancient settlement of Qumran, located on the northwest coast of the Dead Sea, currently known as the West Bank. The scrolls were repurchased by antiquities merchants and scholars who found the text over 2,000 years old. Many other scroll fragments were also discovered in adjoining caverns. A summation of these other scrolls adds up to 800 and 900 texts. This Book of Enoch is further divided into five other books. The Book of Watchers, the Book of Parables, the Astronomical Book, the Dream Visions, and the Epistles of Enoch. These books have a total of 100 chapters. The Book of Enoch is a series of important stories. One part discusses angels, a special tree, Jerusalem and the universe. But the most interesting part is about fallen angels who had intimate relations with human women, resulting in giant children called Nephilim. These angels also taught humans advanced knowledge, leading to a great flood and destruction. Nephilim means fallen ones. People see them as giants. This idea comes from the first book of Enoch, a special Jewish text. But there's a debate. Some think their size is because they're supernatural, while others say it's not right to think angels or demons can have offspring with humans. Another idea is that the Nephilim were just regular people who went off the righteous path. Some say the sons of God were from Seth, a good man from Adam's family, and the Nephilim were his descendants who turned away from God. So, the Book of Enoch makes us think about angels, giants, and humans in a really intriguing way. Enoch's Mysteries There are hidden mysteries found in the Book of Enoch that sound vague and untrue to the human race. These irregularities, unconfirmed mythical mysteries, and secrets related to divinity have led Bible scholars of old to discard the Book of Enoch, deeming it unfit for Christians and humans generally to read. Is the knowledge true or false? Are they truly sacred for human consumption? What hidden truths does it reveal that would challenge human understanding of divinity? The apocryphal Book of Enoch contains a series of mysteries, including the origin of demons and Nephilim, the mystery of Genesis 6-1-5, the reason behind the great flood in the Book of Genesis, the laws that govern the sun, moon, stars and the wind, and the revolt of angels against God, the reason why some angels fell from heaven, the mystery behind the archangel Uriel, the secrets of creation, the thousand-year reign of the Messiah, and many other mythical enigmas. Angelic Watchers The Angelic Watchers The Book of Enoch contains a record of 200 angelic watchers who descended to earth and turned wicked. The names of some of the angels and their leaders were also mentioned in this book. Notable names included were Shemihaza, Asael, Ramel, Artekov, Matarel, Ananel, and Nephilim, the angel who fathered the angel-human hybrids. These listed angels were known as the evil watchers in the book of Enoch. They were called the evil watchers because, after they fell from heaven, they came to earth to carry out acts of wickedness against humans, corrupting the minds of both men and women, and having sexual relations with women and men alike. Other angelic watchers also came to earth and married human women, initiating an unnatural union with them. Due to this union, they started teaching humans forbidden knowledge and practices alien to the human mind. Some taught humans the art of war and weapon making, some taught humans the signs of the earth, some taught astrology, some taught the study of clouds, and some taught the courses of the moon. Yakon, for example, was one of the evil watchers in the Book of Enoch, who masterminded and tempted the other watchers into having sexual relations with humans. His fellow henchmen were Asbiel, Gadriel, Penemu, and Kasdaye. They were all identified as individual Satans and watchers of iniquity. Secret of Creation The Secret of Creation the story of creation is believed to have been revealed to Enoch face to face. 
Before creation, the foundation for all created things was laid, and afterward, he brought everything out of nothing and deep darkness. He created a throne for himself and made the heavens and the earth. The Lord created a throne for himself. He hardened the big stone from the waters to become a solid structure above the waters. The Lord created the armies of the intangible ones from the fire and the reptiles, birds, fish, animals and vegetation until finally he created man. This can be seen in chapters 28 to 29 when God instructed Enoch about the secrets of creation. The Lord also told Enoch, as seen in chapters 24 to 26. In chapter 41, 1 to 3, Enoch tells his experience about creation, saying, These revelations in the book of Enoch about the secret of creation are yet to be confirmed by Bible scholars. Also, it was not accepted by many early church fathers to be accurate. Epistle of Enoch, the Epistles of Enoch. The concluding portion of the book of Enoch, which comprises chapters 91 108, is known as the Epistle of Enoch. Although the epistles in the New Testament of the Holy Bible are known to be letters by Paul the Apostle, the epistles in the book of Enoch were not regarded as letters, rather they imply Enoch's last words to his son, Methuselah. The main part of the Epistle of Enoch talks about his vision of being taken up by God. He counseled his children and family on the need to walk in uprightness, righteousness and faith. Here, he spoke about the great flood to come that later happened in the days of Noah. He spoke on the judgment of the wicked in the flood and the final judgment, which emphasized the resurrection of the dead, as can be seen in chapters 91, 13 to 14. In the epistle of Enoch, there are six listed oracles against the sinners, the witness of the whole creation against them and the assurance of fate after death. The epistle is composed of two layers, a proto-epistle, with a theology near the deterministic doctrine of the Qumran group, and a slightly later part of chapters 94 on 4 and 104.6, that points out the personal responsibility of individuals, often describing the sinners as the wealthy and the just as the oppressed, a theme also found in the Book of Parables. The birth of Noah is a part that appears in Qumran fragments separated from the previous text by a blank line, thus appearing to be an appendix. It tells of the deluge and Noah, who is born already with the appearance of an angel. The concluding appendix of the Book of Enoch was not found in Qumran and is considered to be the work of the final editor. It highlighted the generation of light in opposition to the sinners destined for darkness. Why was the book hidden? Why was the book hidden? Many early church fathers, such as Clement of Alexandria, Tertullian, Irenaeus, and Athenagoras, who wrote around 200 AD, claimed that the Book of Enoch was rejected because it contained prophecies about Jesus that could not be duly confirmed. It was excluded from the formal canons of the Tanakh, the Septuagint, and the Deuterocanon. The major reason for the rejection of the Book of Enoch by the Jews was that it contained inconsistent teachings of the Torah, which is the compilation of the first five books of the Hebrew Bible, namely Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. The Torah, by definition, simply means the laws and teachings of Judaism. The Book of Enoch was widely known in the 4th century AD by early Christians until the church authorities banned it and it virtually disappeared. Due to its irregular teachings and doctrines, it was excluded from the biblical canon. This video will impact your life with extraordinary force because the word of God will not return empty. It changes our lives. The best part of this video is the final part. You will be impacted verse that he doesn't want you to discover. Today, I am here to talk to you about a Bible verse that I am sure he doesn't want you to know. This verse is the key for you to overcome any spiritual attack, any difficult situation, and any evil plan being schemed against your lives. 
But what I'm going to tell you here is how to use this verse, and I'm certain, brothers and sisters, that this will make all the difference. Do not think it will be easy. It is not simple. You must truly be willing to follow everything I'm going to tell you here with great faith and obedience. If you do, I guarantee that you will witness miracles in your lives and he will flee from you. If you have come this far, perhaps your lives are in disarray. Things are not going well for you and there might be a spiritual side behind it. It could be that something truly wicked is trying to prevent your growth. It's all right. I will show you everything here and it will work. Believe in it. But before I begin, I want to ask you to subscribe to my channel because every day, brothers and sisters, I have been recording prayers and messages of faith and hope because I want your well-being. I care about your spirituality, so don't forget to also activate the notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a new video. All right, so let's get started, brothers and sisters. I believe the Brazilian church needs a lot of teaching about spiritual warfare. I have made many videos on my channel about this topic because I understood that if you know how he attacks your lives, you can protect yourselves. Unfortunately, many religious leaders avoid talking about these issues because they fear driving people away from the churches. Brothers and sisters, it should be the opposite. If people knew how to defeat the enemy, God would grant us great victories. We need to understand the following. The Bible talks a lot about God's love, about salvation in Jesus, about repentance, and about heaven. However, the Bible also talks about him and his demons who are out there wanting to destroy people's lives. Every day, I visit the UOL website and the Globo website just to keep up with the news. I'm amazed at how he ruins people's lives. How many family fights, how many betrayals, how many unnecessary deaths. Brothers and sisters, he is real. I am not here to exaggerate his importance because I know he is limited and not as powerful as many believe. However, he wants to affect our relationships, our marriage, our family, our friends, our health, and even our finances. That is why the Bible warns us in 1 Peter 5, 8, that he roams around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. Brothers and sisters, this is serious and can have terrible consequences. Therefore, we cannot play at being Christians. Amen. If we take on a ministry in the church, for example, we must be fully aware that the more we position ourselves on the front line of the spiritual battle, the greater the spiritual attacks will be. However, victory belongs to the people of God. Amen. That is why I want to read the main verse of today's video, the verse that he doesn't want you to know. It is in verse John 5, 18. Pay attention to what is written. We know that anyone born of God does not sin, but he who was born of God keeps him, and the evil one does not touch him. Brothers and sisters, what a powerful verse. Here it shows that all the power of influence that Satan believes he has over your life is nullified when you begin to live according to what this verse says. There is a powerful promise that anyone born of God is under his total protection. He has no power to touch even a hair on your head. All those who have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior and have chosen to live a holy life are protected by the Lord. Amen. I am not saying that a Christian has a perfect life. We can slip, we can stumble, but we must always repent and change our ways. We must always hold on to the word that says, if we confess our sins, the Lord Jesus is faithful and just to forgive us. Amen. We must never stop believing in the power of the blood of Jesus that forgives and purifies us. Brothers and sisters, when we understand this verse from 1 John 5, 18, we understand that the evil one no longer has power over us. If you have been born again, you are a new creature in Christ. You have come out of darkness and now you are in the light. It does not matter if it is a demon. It does not matter if someone has performed a spiritual work of curse against your life. Nothing and no one has the power to touch you. 
However, as I mentioned at the beginning of this video, this is not simple. It is not easy. Many people believe that just because this promise is in the Bible and because they believe it, God's protection and victory over him are guaranteed. But in daily life, they live completely outside the principles of the gospel, and that is useless. The Bible says that even the demons believe in God, that is, just believing is not enough. You need to practice the word. What I mean by this is that if you choose to follow the path of sin, the Holy Spirit will not support you. He will not have communion with darkness, and as a result, you will distance yourself from God. Even if you have the Holy Spirit, you can become spiritually cold. I want to share my testimony of a time when I was a new convert. I started dating a girl who was not firm in her faith. She had been baptized in the church, but she was still in an ambiguous position. We know that this indecision is not from God, but belongs to the enemy. Between the church and the world, the relationship did not work out as God had warned me. Despite this, over time, my emotional need grew stronger. The struggle between the flesh and the spirit is real. I wanted the things of God, but was also inclined to commit the sins of the flesh. One day she called me, also in need, he knows when we are vulnerable. He was surrounding and watching me. In the book of Job, he presents himself before God, saying he was wandering the earth. He knows human weaknesses. At that moment, she called me to talk. Despite having decided to walk with God, she kissed me. That was enough to cool my spiritual life. I share this testimony to show that he is cunning. He is like a serpent. We must always be alert. Today, thanks to God, I am married to someone he put in my path, Thais. We have been married for 10 years and have two beautiful children, a boy and a girl. I am here to tell you, it is worth renouncing the flesh, worth renouncing sin, brothers and sisters. After kissing that girl, my spiritual life cooled down a lot. I couldn't pray, couldn't read the Bible and had no desire to go to church. However, one day I became very concerned about this and decided to fight against that inertia, that spiritual lethargy I was sunk in. It was then that I attended a Wednesday service. I did not feel the presence of God as before. Something was wrong. I began to speak to God in prayer, asking Him to show me what was happening. That was when the Holy Spirit made me remember that kiss. From that moment, I repented and asked God for forgiveness because I should not have acted that way, especially since I was no longer dating that girl and knew she was not firm in her faith. She was involved with marijuana, alcohol, and I had given a place to the enemy. It is important to highlight the importance of always being on guard and attentive to the enemy's traps. We must remain firm in our faith and commitment to God as our weaknesses can be exploited by Him to distance us from our spiritual path. We must not be swayed by the temptations of the world and remember that our focus should be on serving God and following His commandments. If you ever find yourself in a similar situation, do not hesitate to seek God's help and ask for His forgiveness. He is always willing to forgive those who sincerely repent and seek to return to his path. It is essential to be in constant repentance, asking God to protect and guard us. I want you to understand that it is not enough to just know the Bible. It is necessary to live it constantly. I shared this example to emphasize that knowing the Bible is not enough. It is necessary to practice it at all times. Now, for those who have understood this message, I want to pray for your lives. I know the Holy Spirit has touched many of you here. God has a wonderful work for your lives, but it is necessary to obey the word. Remember that the spiritual world exists, the spiritual battle exists, but from today, he will no longer have power over your lives. When you take a stand, you will see miracles happening. Good things will start to happen naturally in your lives, because you are now on the side of the victor. Jesus said he came to give us life in abundance, a life of victory, a life of freedom where nothing enslaves us. 
He no longer has power over you. Close your eyes if possible and let us make a prayer of warfare. Let us reject everything that is of the darkness, ask for forgiveness and request that God guard and protect us in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Let us pray. Amen. This video will impact you on three mysteries of the end of the world. According to the Bible, the third mystery is the most impressive. Stay until the end of the video so you don't miss out on the mystery. 1. The Rapture Explanation Briefly explain the concept of rapture. The rapture is a future event in Christian eschatology where believers in Christ will be taken to meet the Lord in the air, both those who died and those who are still alive. Key verses of the Bible, 1 Thessalonians 4, 16, 17 NIV, For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a loud shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After this, we who are still alive and remain will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will be with you forever. 1 Corinthians 15, 5152 NIV, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all sleep, but we will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound, the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we will be changed. Different interpretations, pre-tribulation rapture, the belief that the rapture will occur before the seven-year tribulation period sparing believers from the suffering and trials of the tribulation. Mid-tribulation rapture, the belief that the rapture will occur halfway through the tribulation, after the first three, one, two years of relative peace, but before the great tribulation, which is marked by severe trials and divine judgments. Post-tribulation rapture, the belief that the rapture will occur at the end of the tribulation, with believers enduring the entire seven-year period and being raptured. Before the second coming of Christ, visuals, diagrams showing different timelines of the rapture, pre-tribulation, mid-tribulation, post-tribulation, discussion points. What will happen during the rapture? Believers will be caught up in the air to meet the Lord, receiving transformed and glorified bodies. Who will be? Taken those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, both living and deceased believers. The debate between theologians, the different views and interpretations about the moment of the rapture and the events surrounding it, with references to the biblical support for each position. Mystery 2, the Antichrist introduction explanation of the concept of the Antichrist. The Antichrist is a figure in Christian eschatology who is prophesied to appear during the end times as a deceiver and a powerful leader opposed to Christ and his followers. The term Antichrist means an opponent of Christ or false. False Messiah who will seek to lead people away from the true faith. Key verse from the Bible, 1 John 2.18 NIV Little Children, this is the last hour. And just as you have heard that the Antichrist is coming too, now many Antichrists have arisen. That's why we know it's the last hour. 2 Thessalonians 234 N. Sigvis Do not let anyone deceive you in any way, for this will not happen without the rebellion occurring and the man of lawlessness being revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and exalt himself above everything that is called God or is worshipped so that he will sit in the temple of God, proclaiming, if God, Apocalypse 13, Dean and Seat Nivey. This passage describes the rise of the sea beast, which many interpret as the Antichrist. Verses 1618 are particularly notable. He also forced all men, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hand or on their forehead, so that they could neither buy nor sell unless they had the mark which is the name of the beast or your name number. This requires wisdom. Let him who has understanding calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. This number is 666. 
Characteristics, description of the characteristics and actions of the Antichrist, deception and charisma. The Antichrist will be a charismatic leader who will deceive many through persuasive speeches and miraculous signs. Revelation 13 and 13 and 14, blasphemy and opposition. He will blaspheme God and present himself as a deity demanding worship. 2 Tatalonians 24, Apocalypse 13, 56. Global domination, the Antichrist will seek to establish a worldwide empire, exercising political, economic, and military control over nations. Revelation 13, 7, persecution of the saints, he will wage war against the saints, persecuting and killing those who refuse to worship him. Revelation 13, 7, 10, discussion of the prophecy of the man of sin. Hos 234 describes the man of lawlessness, or man of sin, who will be revealed before the day of the Lord. This individual will oppose and exalt himself above everything called God, even sitting in the temple of God, claiming to be God. This passage is often associated with the Antichrist, highlighting his blasphemous and deceptive nature as the number of his name, Apocalypse 13, 18, Depictions of the mark of the beast, a symbol or mark necessary for economic transactions, signifying loyalty to the Antichrist, Revelation 13, 16, 17. Talking points. How will the Antichrist come to power? Political and economic turbulence. The Antichrist will rise to power during a time of great political and economic instability. He will present himself as a savior who can bring peace and stability. Daniel 8, 23-25 Deceptive miracles, he will perform signs and wonders to deceive people and gain their loyalty. According to Thessalonians 29-10, alliance with many, the Antichrist will make an alliance with many nations, possibly bringing temporary peace to the Middle East. Daniel 9, 27 Signs to be heeded, increased lawlessness, an increase in lawlessness and moral decay, setting the stage for the rule of the Antichrist, according to Thessalonians 23. False prophets and deception, an increase in false prophets and deceptive teachings. Matthew 24, 24, global governance moves toward a world government and economic system. Revelation 13, 7, the final destiny of the Antichrist According to biblical prophecy, defeat at the return of Christ, the Antichrist will be defeated by Jesus at his second coming. Revelation 19.19 Dessings, E6 Eternal Punishment, he will be thrown into the lake of fire where he will be tormented forever. Revelation 20 and 10. Mystery 3, the second coming of Christ, explanation of the second coming of Christ, the second coming of Christ refers to the future return of Jesus to earth, as promised in the New Testament. It is a central event in Christian eschatology, where Christ will return in glory to judge the living and the dead, establish his kingdom, and bring about the fulfillment of God's redemptive plan. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven. And all the peoples of the earth mourned when they saw the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. Revelation 19.11, 16n. I saw heaven open, and before me a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wars with his eyes. They are like burning fire, and on their heads are many crowns. On his robe and on his thigh he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords events leading up to the second coming. Signs of the return of Christ, natural disasters, increased frequency of earthquakes, famines and other natural disasters, Matthew 24, 78, wars and rumors of wars, conflicts and global unrest, Matthew 20, E, 09, 56, 46. Persecution, intensified persecution of Christians, Matthew 24, 9. The Great Tribulation, a period of unprecedented suffering and turmoil on earth, often lasting seven years until the return of Christ, 
Matthew 24, 21, 22 apocalypses and 7 and 14 other prophetic events, the rise of the Antichrist, the Antichrist will gain power and deceive many Gustalonians, 234 the mark of the beast, a system of economic control linked to loyalty to the Antichrist, Apocalypse 13 and 16, 17 representations of the final battle, Armageddon, artistic representations of the battle between the forces of good and evil at the end of time. Apocalypse 16, 16, 19, 19. Talking points. What will happen during Christ's return? Resurrection of the dead. The dead in Christ will rise first, followed by the transformation of the living believers first. Thessalonians 4, 68. Judgment. Jesus will judge the nations by separating the righteous from the Indians. Matthew 25, 31. The final judgment judgment of the great white throne. The final judgment of all humanity where each person is judged according to his actions. Revelation 2011, 15. The establishment of the new heaven and the new earth. 1126, new creation. God will create a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness dwells and there will be no more death, sadness or pain. Apocalypse. 2114. New Discover the Old Shiloh, you will surprise. Watch the whole video, because the best part is the end of the video. The excavation at ancient Shiloh, unveiling layers of history. In the heart of ancient Shiloh, the meticulous excavation led by Dr. Scott Stripling has been unearthing an intricate tapestry of history. The site rich with archaeological and biblical significance, holds a story that stretches back thousands of years. Every artifact, bone and layer of soil adds depth to our understanding of the ancient world and its connection to biblical narratives. Discovering Layers of Time As the excavation team digs deeper into the layers of Shiloh, they uncover a wealth of artifacts and remains. The site is particularly notable for the vast number of bones found, which are stacked layer upon layer. This microstratigraphy reveals that the deposition of bones occurred over a long period, much like the Bible describes. Dr. Stripling elaborates, we found bones of sheep, goats and cattle, with a remarkable and disproportionate number coming from the right side of these animals. This morning, for instance, we unearthed numerous jawbones, predominantly from the right side. According to Leviticus 7, the right side of the animal was reserved as the priest's portion. Given that priests resided here, this finding isn't merely coincidental. It aligns perfectly with the biblical texts. The end of the workday. Ritual. As the sun sets, the day's work is signaled to a close by the resounding blast of a shofar. The staff and volunteers gather to wash the day's discoveries, sharing stories and reflections. This daily ritual not only serves as a practical task, but also fosters a sense of community among the diverse team, which comprises members from 13 countries and 16 universities. Working here is an incredible experience. A volunteer shared, her voice filled with awe. It sends chills up your spine when you think about the ancient people who lived here. Each layer we uncover reveals more about their lives and times. The further down we dig, the more impressive the discoveries become. Connecting with the Holy of Holies, Susie Skypes, a dedicated member of the excavation team, has the unique experience of working in what may have been the Holy of Holies. She describes the profound impact this work has had on her. I never imagined I'd be here digging in a place I've read about in the Bible. It's surreal to connect with these ancient texts on such a personal level. Being here has transformed how I read and understand the Bible. I can now visualize the places and events described making the scriptures come alive for me. Uncovering the sacrificial system. Jordan, who oversees the dig at the sacrificial bone deposit, reflects on the significance of their discoveries. As a believer, 
Uncovering these bones is profound. The sacrificial system represented a perpetual offering, repeated year after year. Knowing that Jesus came to fulfill this system brings the whole experience full circle. It's humbling to witness firsthand. He continues, We're in the bone business here, Chris. These bones tell the story of the sacrificial system, where animals were offered for atonement and the forgiveness of sins connecting people to God. The pottery and bones we've found so far align unmistakably with the biblical narrative. Technological Innovations in Archaeology The excavation at Shiloh is at the forefront of archaeological innovation. The team employs advanced techniques such as on-site wet sifting, which allows for the discovery of many more ancient artifacts than traditional methods. Each find is meticulously documented and catalogued using the latest technology, ensuring that no detail is overlooked. Dr. Stripling explains, wet sifting helps us uncover artifacts that would otherwise be missed. This process significantly enhances our ability to find small objects, such as tiny bone fragments or shards of pottery, which are crucial for understanding the broader context of the site. The importance of continued excavation. The team expects to continue their work at Shiloh for several more years, given the rich potential for new discoveries. Dr. Stripling underscores the importance of their ongoing efforts. In the realm of ideas, we are part of a crucial debate. The notion that the Bible is not a reliable historical source is a fantasy that has gained traction over time. However, our findings repeatedly correlate with the biblical text, demonstrating its reliability. Reflecting on the broader implications of their work, he adds, if we can trust what God did in history, we can trust him today and for the future. It's a reminder that God loves us and has a plan for humanity. A personal journey of discovery. For many team members, the excavation is not just a professional endeavor, but a deeply personal journey. The act of uncovering ancient artifacts and connecting them to biblical narratives has profound spiritual and emotional implications. Being here has changed my life, one team member shared. Every day we uncover pieces of history that make the Bible come alive. It's an incredible privilege to be part of this project, to walk in the footsteps of ancient people and to contribute to our understanding of their world the archaeological community, and public engagement. The work at Shiloh is not only of interest to the academic community, but also to the public. The discoveries made here resonate with people of faith around the world, providing tangible evidence of the stories they have read and believed in. Dr. Stripling emphasizes the importance of public engagement, while we publish our results in scientific journals, it's equally important to share our findings with the broader public. People need to see that the Bible can be trusted as a historical document. Our work here at Shiloh provides compelling evidence that supports the biblical narrative. The broader impact on biblical scholarship. The excavation at Shiloh is contributing significantly to the field of biblical archeology. span the findings not only provide insights into the daily lives of ancient people, but also offer evidence that supports the historical accuracy of biblical texts. Dr. Stripling notes, Our work here at Shiloh is reshaping our understanding of biblical history. The artifacts and structures we uncover help us to piece together the past in ways that were previously impossible. This site is a treasure trove of information and every day brings new discoveries. The spiritual significance of Shiloh Shiloh holds a special place in biblical history. It is where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, where Joshua divided the promised land among the 12 tribes, and where Hannah prayed for a son who would become the prophet Samuel. The tabernacle stood here for nearly 400 years, making it a central place of worship and community for ancient Israelites. 
Dr. Stripling reflects on the spiritual significance of the site. Shiloh is a place where people came to connect with God. Jerusalem was still a pagan city for many years, while Shiloh was the spiritual center. The Ark and the Tabernacle were here, and people from all over the region would come to worship and make sacrifices. It's incredible to stand here and think about the profound spiritual experiences that took place on this very ground. Bridging the gap between ancient texts and modern discoveries. One of the most exciting aspects of the excavation at Shiloh is the way it bridges the gap between ancient texts and modern discoveries. The physical evidence unearthed here provides a tangible connection to the stories and events described in the Bible. Dr. Stripling explains every artifact we find, every structure we uncover, helps to bring the biblical narrative to life. We can see the material culture of the people who lived here, understand their daily lives, and gain insights into their spiritual practices. This connection between the past and the present is incredibly powerful. The journey ahead. The excavation at Shiloh is far from over. The team continues to uncover new layers of history, each one adding to the rich tapestry of the site. With many more years of work ahead, there is still much to discover and learn. Dr. Stripling looks to the future with anticipation. We're just scratching the surface of what Shiloh has to offer. Each season brings new challenges and new discoveries. I'm excited to see what we will find 